I've dated much worse guys than him. Much worse. I mean, at least he's famous. I started by using the Match custom search filter. I filtered out joy, happiness, toilet paper, and reason. Boom. Most years I've dated are a little, I don't know, straightforward. I mean, there's a little misery, but nothing truly soul crushing about them. I just want to be remembered, you know? Do you know the poem, The Road Less Traveled by Shakespeare? I actually have the tattoo of it. Don't ask me where. You devil. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> she gets me. That's the best part. When you meet someone that takes time to see beneath the surface. Of the earth. <laughs> it's just a perfect match. Oh my, somebody say red flags. <laughs> wow, red flags. So excited to be here with y'all today. Uh, I'm Pastor Christopher. This is my wife. Dr. Carmen, good morning. Good to see everybody good morning, today. Good morning. Amen. So last week, uh, myself and my wife, along with Pastor Tommy and Pastor Lucy, we tag team uh, the message uh, last week. But this week, y'all get to put up with the Harris's uh, for a little bit, and um, we get to close the series out. We've been in this series for four weeks, and so we're excited about that. Here's what I want to do. Y'all going to be sitting down for just a moment while we talk, but I want to invite you, before you get too comfortable, stand for just a second. We're going to pray really fast before we jump into the message, uh, and then we'll, we'll jump right in from there. By the way, um, do y'all have that picture really fast of those red flags? Look at this really fast. This is really interesting. Uh, that video is hilarious, by the way. When, when did you see a few red flags, but you sure thought you could change them? How many of y'all ever been in a relationship like that where you thought you could change the person? <laughs> oh, by the way, we're a truthful church here. <laughs> Amen. Pastor Christopher, I want you to meet him, or I want you to meet her, because I'm praying, I'm fasting, God's going to change their life. Sure. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's going to be a great day. Let's pray together. Father, we say thank you very much for the privilege, the honor, and the opportunity today to discuss your word in this fashion. I pray, Father, that um, there will be no distractions in our midst today. I thank you, God, that there is healing that is available in the house today. There is restoration that is available in this worship experience today. Your word tells us that we are set free by truth. And so, Father, thank you for the truth of the gospel that will be shared today. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, you're in charge of our time together, mm -hmm. and we give you the right to speak and to move and to bless how you so choose to do so. Mm -hmm. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 You can have your seats, everybody. Thank you all so very much. Thank you so very much. So we are closing out this series that we've been in now for four weeks called Hot and Bothered. Hot and Bothered. How many of y'all have been here all four weeks of the series? I'm just curious. All right. Okay. How many of y'all have only seen one week of the series? How many of y'all have seen at least two weeks of the series? All right, the vast majority, so that's good. So we, got, we don't have to, we have to do a whole, whole lot of groundwork and reviewing. By the way, all of our messages every single week, uh, you can go to our YouTube page, crossoverchurch.org uh, slash, oh, not Crossover Church, that's our website, uh, youtube.com <laughs> slash crossover813. Uh, so on all social media platforms, we're Crossover813, and you can go to our website, uh, go to our YouTube page, go to our Facebook page, and see all of our previous sermon series and, and uh, messages that we've done, so you can go back and track along with that. Before we jump in today, if you have kids in the room with you today, uh, this may be a great time for you to allow them to experience kids' ministry today, all right? So if you've got little ones, uh, that is particularly ages 11 and below, then we want to invite you really fast, if you would, uh, feel free to escort them over to Kids Ministry. Our First Impressions folks are, are prepared to help you get over there in ease. And then also, if you have high schoolers, middle schoolers or high schoolers in here, uh, today our movement, which is what we call our middle school and high school ministry, they are, they are relaunching their, ser their services every single Sunday now. So th let's thank God for that. Uh, our, our middle school and high school ministry 
they are ramping up to make sure that they can host our middle schoolers and high schoolers every single Sunday. So uh, before that, they would meet on Wednesday nights, but now they're meeting on Sundays, and we're really excited about that. So if you have middle schoolers and high schoolers, they can also go and check out uh, the movement services over where Maddie Ray, uh, who you just saw uh, leading us in song just then, she's actually going to be helping to speak today in addition to Pastor Carmine and Pastor Wallace. So we're really, really excited about that. All right? So let's jump into the Word. Everybody say the Word. Word. We're going to jump into the Word today. And, and what I, what I want to sort of just frame our time together, first of all, with is this. That as we've walked through this series, one of the things that has become crystal clear um, as Pastor, Pastor Tommy started the series in the first week, he and Pastor Lucy talked the second week. The four of us uh, did the panel last week, and then my wife and I are coming this week. We recognize that in many ways we need a spiritual and a sexual reset. We need a reset. How many of you know that there are times that you get off base from where God really intended for you to be? How many of y'all recognize that, right? And, and there are times that we need to do a reset. That is, to press the reset button and to literally recalibrate so that we can get on par and in a space where God wants us to be. And I want to give you this working definition as we start out here, and then my wife is going to come and just kind of help to further lay the foundation here. But I want to give you a working definition for this, this spiritual reset here for a moment. Uh, before I do that, let me give you this quote here. Uh, by Michael Yasinelli from the book Messy Spirituality. Here's what he says. He says, getting stuck can be the best thing that could happen to us because it forces us to stop. Everybody say stop. Stop. It halts the momentum in our lives. We have no choice but to notice what is happening around us and we end up searching for Jesus. Wow. We need a reset, y'all. We need a reset because here's the deal. Here's, here's the bottom line analysis of this all. We've gotten to a place in our culture today, but more specifically because this conversation is for those of us that, ascri that subscribe and ascribe to the Christian faith. And we recognize that there may be people here, you're checking out the church for the first time or uh, you're not new to the Christian faith and you're trying to figure out what this Christianity thing is all about. You get an opportunity to eavesdrop in and to lean in on what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ and what we believe about the Bible. And we recognize that there's some churches historically um, that have done some abusive things that have talked about this in abusive ways. Right backstage, my wife was just telling me about a, uh, a story that one of the members of our church told her right before service started of something that they had to do that was totally embarrassing and harm, harmful uh, to them with regards to a mistake that they made uh, and, and as it relates to their sex and sexual life. And so even with that being said, just because the church has been abusive or has done things that have not been ordered, that still doesn't take away the fact that we still have God's word and we've got to get back in line with what God desires for our life. How many of y'all understand that? Come on, raise your hands if you agree with that. We, we got to get to a place, brothers and sisters, where... The things that breaks the heart of God also breaks our heart. Let me let that sit in the room for just a moment. The things that breaks the heart of God also breaks our heart. It is not just a matter of do's and don'ts and you should and you should not. It is what is God's desire for our lives? I, I, I'm going I'm, I'm to embarrass my wife here for a second probably. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I want to make a confession because as we were working on this message, <laughs> I, I was, we were doing this outline and kind of putting this together. And I was like, you know what? We really need to like, like get in people's face with this. And she was like, yeah, okay, what are you thinking? And so how many of y'all remember in high school when you had sex ed class and they showed you those pictures of like the SDDs and all that kind of stuff? How many of y'all remember that? I wanted to show that picture, Natalie, on the screen. My wife was like, you cannot do that. You cannot show that picture on the screen. And even I told Pastor Tommy about it. He was like, no, please don't do that. Please don't do that. But, but here's the deal. But I'll say this. Uh-oh. I'm going to tell you why. <coughs> because some of you saw that picture and still did it. Okay? Sorry. I wasn't supposed to say that yet. Go ahead. You go ahead. Sorry. Keep going. They were listening. Weren't y'all listening? Okay, keep going. Go ahead. Sorry. It was not my turn yet. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Ah. So... <laughs> So here, here's the real deal, though, right? And she's right. How many of y'all know she's right? She's telling the truth. She's telling the truth. Um, that's not God's will for our life. 
To have to be worried about sexually transmitted disease, diseases, that's not God's will for our life. To have like all of the, these sexual regrets, that's not God's will for our life. To be, to be literally in a space where we're saying what God says is wrong, we're now saying it's right, that's not God's will for our lives. Right? We, we have had, Pastor Lucy will attest to this, over the years we've had people that are a part of our church that literally have been living in, cohabitating. Uh, how many of y'all remember what they used to call it? <laughs> See, y'all know. See? <laughs> Yeah, we don't, we don't use that phrase anymore now because it's, it's so acceptable now, right? But, but we literally have had people that, have had, that they've stopped coming to church because the church has said to them, no, that's not God's will for your life. And they're like, well, who are you to tell me what God's is, will is for my life? Our assignment is to simply give you the word of God. Now, we're not going to micromanage your life, but our assignment is to simply give you the word of God. And so today we're going to talk about reset. Everybody say reset. Reset. All right. You, wanna... you didn't give him a working definition. That's oh, you... I, yeah, I'm sorry. You... All right. Here's the definition of reset. Here's the definition of reset. Write this down. And for those of you that have the crossover app, you can take some notes today in the app as well as we walk through this. Here's the definition of reset. It literally means to set again, to move back to the original position. I love this one. To put back in correct position. Somebody say correct. Correct. It literally means to start over, to fresh to have a fresh start or to cleanse as you restart, right? So when you think about everything that's a restart or a reset, you are starting back to the original position so that it functions the way that it's supposed to function, right? And there's, uh, there's some examples that we're going to give you here uh, in just a minute. As a matter of fact, I will give you one right now. Um, how many of y'all have ever driven your car before? You got new, car, new tires on the car, but the car was still wobbling. How many of y'all ever had that before? And you discover that you can get new wheels on your car, but if you don't get an alignment, you still got some issues, right? You got this nice car, these new tires. You even went to the car wash and got it washed because you're like, man, I want these new tires to shine. But you didn't get an alignment, so guess what happens? You still had issues, right? Alignment matters. Alignment matters. So walking in alignment with the word of God is what actually allows us to be able to function the way that God intends for us to function, all right? And we were talking about, as you talk about a reset, we, usually you think about devices, right? You reset your phone, but I thought further. Um, it's beyond getting stuck. If you have any type of smartphone, it gets stuck. They usually tell you, turn it off, turn it back on, right? That's usually a reset. But when it's really broken, you have to call Apple. We're an Apple family, so any of you that are not Apple, sorry. We're apostolic. You have to call them, <laughs> and they tell you to do, when it's really bad, you have to do a hard reset. Hard reset. Back to the original hmm. factory's um, design. When you do a regular reset, when you turn your phone off and you turn it back on, you know, your app's not working, that's one level. But we're talking about some of us need a hard reset hmm. as we think about the area of sex. So what are some of the areas that we might need a reset? Um, with emotional frustration around sex. Hmm. So when you think about that, what is your belief idea and how you behave or respond um, in response to emotional frustration with sex? What about uh, mental exhaustion or the existence of relationship chaos, okay? Um, spiritual disorientation or even identity issues around the idea of sex. We need a hard reset so that we align our lives the way that God says it. We love to get God's results doing it our way. We said, well, you know what? I'm going to go to church on Sunday because God, the, the church told me that. But then, you know, I'm going to do what I want on Monday. And then Wednesday, I'm going to come to Bible study and make up and repent. And then I'm going to say I'm sorry. And then by Saturday, you know, I'm going to go out and do my thing. And then by Sunday, it starts over again. And we want a holistic life that God has designed for us. And I'm going to use the old school term by dipping and dodging. Mm during the week. So we're, we're here to challenge you for a hard spiritual reset yeah. in the area of sex. You with us? Yeah. You can handle it. 
All right, here we go. Yeah, so we, we, were, we were searching scripture and trying to find, okay, what, what verse or what section of scripture speaks to this the best? So we're going we're gonna to look in Judges chapter number 16. And so if you have a physical Bible, you can go ahead and turn there. If you're using your Bible app, you can go ahead and do that. If you have the crossover app, we actually put the entire text of that chapter in the app for you to read along with us. Um, this morning, as I was uh, on the way to church, um, I, I drove through this section of, of, of Tampa that's called Ebor. Um, and as I, as I was driving through this section of Ebor, uh, when I got particularly near I-4, there were like, I don't know, like 12 or 13 police cars. And as I got closer to that intersection where those police cars were, uh, I noticed that there was a tarp that was covering these, this body that was on the ground. And I saw uh, there was like this, this um, uh, where the, the public uh, bus transportation comes. It was one of those bus stop areas. So I saw some, some uh, stuff that was on the bus stop. And then I saw these remains on the ground. So it, it became pretty clear to me that this probably uh, was a person that was homeless or a person that probably was transient in some ways that had passed away. And as I'm, as I'm looking at these police cars and I'm looking at uh, this body that's on the ground, um, there are people that are honking. Get out of the way, right? They're in a rush to get to where they're trying to go. And yet I'm saying to myself, there's a, there's, a, there's a body that's on the ground, right? And in that moment, I'm, I've got the message running through my mind, and I'm on the way to church. And in my mind, I'm saying, this is sort of what it's like in life, that, that oftentimes we're in a rush to get to where we're trying to go, and we're not even paying attention to what's happening around us. We're, we're not even aware of the detriment of, of the cessation of life, the end of life, and the reality of life and death that's happening right around us. And I, I want to remind you of that as we get ready to read this text. And I know that some of y'all are going to, you know, you're going to hear us today and you're going to get home and you're going to be like, oh, well, you know, uh, if we were to tell y'all read the scripture, some of y'all are not going to read it. So guess what we're going to do today? We're going to read the whole thing. <laughs> we're going to read the whole thing. So, so Judges chapter number 16, Judges chapter number 16, and they're also going to put this on the screen for those of you that don't have your Bibles. If you got it, say, I got it. I got it. If you're ready, say, I'm ready. All right, Samson went to Gaza, and there he saw a prostitute, and he went in to her. The Gazites were told, Samson has come here. And they surrounded the place and set an ambush for him all night at the gate of the city. They kept quiet all night, saying, let us wait till the light of the morning, then we will kill him. But Samson lay till midnight. And at midnight he arose and took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and pulled them up, bar and all, and put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that is in front of Hebron. After this, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. And the lords of the Philistines came to her and said to her, seduce him. Now, if you've got a physical Bible or you're making notes right here, you need to underline and circle that word. That's an important word right there, right? Okay, let's keep going. Seduce him and see where his great strength lies and by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to humble him, and we will each give you 1,100 pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies and how you might be bound that one could subdue you. Samson said to her, if they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Then the Lord of the Philistines brought up her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried, and she bound him with them. Now she had men, she had men lying in ambush in an inner chamber. And she said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he snapped the bowstrings as a thread of flax snaps when it uh, touches the fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, Behold, you have mocked me and told me lies. Please tell me how you might be bound. And he said to her, If they bind me with new ropes that have not been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. And the men lying in ambush were in an inner chamber, but he snapped the ropes off his arms like a thread. Can I pause for just a second? You know what I just noticed? I wonder if Samson thought these were sex toys. <laughs> Keep reading. Keep reading. Okay. All right. I'm back. 
like. That's the first time I've ever seen that in the text like that. All right, I, I got two brothers over here like, hey. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Come back. Come back. Where are we stopping? Verse 13? All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Y'all come back now. Come back. You had to be here last week to get that reference. Okay, let's keep going. All right. Then Delilah said to Samson, until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me how you might be bound. And he said to her, if you weave the seven locks of my head with the web and fasten it tight with the pen, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So while he slept, Delilah took the seven locks of his head and wove them into the web, and she made them tight with the pen and said to him, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep and pulled away the pen, the loom, and the web. And she said to him, How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times. You have not told me where your greatest strength lies. And when she pressed him hard, with her words day after day and urged him, his soul was vexed to death. And he told her all his heart and said to her, a razor has never come upon my head for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If my head is shaved, then my strength shall leave me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. <laughs> Somebody yell, why he told. When, when Delilah saw that he, could, that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called the lords of the Philistines saying, come again, for he has told me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came upon her and brought the money in their hands. She made him sleep on her knees. She called a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him and his strength left him. She said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. And he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. And the Philistines seized him and gouged out his eyes, brought him down to Gaza and bound him with bronze shackles. And he ground at the meal in the prison. But the hair of his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Now the Lord of the Philistines, the lords of the Philistines gathered to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and to rejoice. And they said, our God has given Samson, our enemy, into our hand. And when the people saw him, they praised their God. For they said, our God has given our enemy into our hand, the ravager of our country, who has killed many of us. And when their hearts were married, they said, call Samson, that he may entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he entertained them. They made him stand between the pillars, and Samson said to the young man who held him by the hand, let me fill the pillars on which the house rests, that I may lean against them. Now the house was full of men and women. All the lords of the Philistines were there, and of the roof, on the roof there were about 3,000 men and women who looked on while Samson entertained them. Then Samson called to the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, please remember me and please strengthen me only this once, O God, that I may be avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson grasped the two middle pillars on which the house rested, and he leaned his weight against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Then he bowed with all his strength, and the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people who were in it. So the dead whom he killed at his death were more than those whom he had killed during his life. Then his brothers and all his family came down and took him and brought him up and buried, them, buried him between Zorah and Estal in the tomb of Manoah, his father. He had judged Israel 20 years. How many of y'all have ever actually read that entire chapter? Wow. So we feel like today we want to give you just a few points that we believe that this text speaks to of what a sexual reset looks like for the believers. All right? So if you're taking notes, here's the first one. And we're going we're gonna to give you some alliteration today. All of them starts with a T, all right? So here's the first one. You can write this word down. It's going to be on the screens. The first word is type. Type. What type of person are you? What's your, what's your background? Where do you place your identity, right? In this case, it is very clear that Samson had an issue with women. And please hear this. Let me make this very clear, because historically in the church, 
We've always taught that, so, that Delilah was a woman, right, and, and, and Samson is a man. Now, and that's true in Scripture. Mm -hmm. that's, that is a description in Scripture that we see. But this text is also prescriptive for us, meaning that the metaphor here for us is that some Samsons can be women. And some Delilahs can be a man. Right? So in this case, are you putting your identity based on what you can do in the bed? Is that where your identity lies? Are you putting yourself in a place where you're literally hinging your identity around your performance in those intimate moments where you shouldn't be? Because when your identity becomes wrapped around that, guess what? When you don't do well there, then you really struggle in life beyond that. What type of person are you? What type of person are you? Anything you want to add to that? No, nope. keep going. All right. <laughs> Here's the other thing that's really interesting, I think, about this. So when you look up who Delilah was, Delilah was a part of the Philistines. Samson was a Nazarite. The text tells us that he's a Nazarite. Mm -hmm. So when Samson's mother was pregnant with him, she made a commitment to raise her son as a Nazarite. That is a person, a group of people that are direct, directly, um, they, they've made a commitment to how they're going to serve God. And as a part of that commitment, they're saying, we're not going to shave our head. We're not going to do certain things, live a certain kind of way, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, notice that Delilah literally represents the complete opposite of everything about Samson's life. So are you asking them to examine who they are and why he would even be attracted to her to begin with? Exactly. Hmm. Okay. Why, why would Samson, who is mm -hmm. a Nazarite, correct, who's made a commitment before God, mm -hmm. be attracted to a prostitute? Like, like, what was it about her? The mm -hmm. Bible actually says in verse 4, he fell in love with her. He did. So my question is, what was it about her? Mm -hmm. What did she offer him? Mm -hmm. Right? Because the truth of the matter is, he had more to lose than she did. I'm going to skip point two, jump to point three. Mm. And point three, we're doing points. about, yeah, on, I know, Jesus. I'm skipping points because I'm going to go ahead and go with it. Point All right. three is recognizing the truth of your situation. Wow. Um, in 19, I believe, 86, Marvin Gaye, and y'all don't act like y'all so saved, Marvin Gaye made a song called, Se oh, somebody up here, <laughs> Sexual Healing. In that song, he talked about how sex was a, a healing or a salve, almost like a, like, a, like a medicine to cure. But when I'm talking about sexual healing, I'm talking about being healed from sexual experiences. Yeah. Because part of who we are and the decisions that we make are embedded in some of the experiences and the beliefs that we have about sex. Wow. Um, I have a friend, and I did ask her, I said, hey, girl, I may talk about you on Sunday. She said, what you talking about? We talk about sex. Well, give my name and number. I said, no, girl. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but we were having a conversation. <laughs> She's single. Um, but we do were not, having do not don't walk <laughs> up to us afterwards and ask for her name and number. Don't do that. But she did say that. But we were having a conversation and we were looking at the patterns of the relationships that she had been in. Mm. And so if you talk about the level of toxicity, the higher the level of toxicity, the more longevity the relationship had. Just attracted to drama. Okay? The longer. Um, and then on the flip side, if there was a gentleman that was, you know, what, 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 you know, what we, you know, ladies, the flowers, all that, the life of that relationship didn't seem to last as long. And so I asked her, she asked me, she said, girl, what's wrong with my mind? And I said, you need a reset in how you perceive what is healthy and what is not healthy. Same thing with Samson. Um, I think about, and, and part of what we say truth, it's owning your role in that too. And we're not talking about victim shaming and all that, because you know, it's a vic they shaming the victim. No. I'm talking about what role do you play in the relationship toxicity, if that's sex or whatever that looks like, and you have to own your role. Yeah. I thought about in college, um, and this was before Pastor Christopher, okay? <laughs> we met in college, but, but I went to college, I was 17. I turned 18 in college, and here I am excited, all these good-looking men, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And so I'm on, I'm on this campus, and and, he was, I didn't know him yet. 
And this and 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 then I'm in the union, which is like the, the common area of the school, and this older gentleman who's about 45 says, Hey girl, what's up? And he was a groundskeeper, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. And, and he's 45. He said, Hey girl, uh, what's up with you? And I said to him, I had a real slick mouth, and then I said to him, I said, you tell me what I did to make you think that we could ever be together. Because I don't ever want to do that again. Because I needed to own the role I was playing in some of the toxicity, right, if, if it's there. And so that's what we challenge Samuel to do, or even um, Samson to do, and even some of you in your relationships. What is the truth of your relationship? Because it's easy to point and say what they did, and well, you know what he said, but you got in a relationship. You did it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So what is the truth of the relationship? What is your status with that? Mm. That's one side to think about. But on the flip side, sexual healing can mean those individuals that may have had traumatic experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Coming to terms with that. How do I get a sexual reset when I am the victim? Yeah. Right? There are some real victims of sexual activities and different things, and we recognize that. But I promise you that Jesus said, come unto me. That's what he said. Amen. And that he will give you the sexual reset, yeah. even in that area, so that you can perceive relationships in a healthy way and know the truth. Yeah. That is his desire. So that sexual healing then for you is like what Marvin Gaye was talking about. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's, so there's, I skipped one. Sorry. That's okay. No, I, I think, I mean, there's, there's some people who literally, um, if we will be honest, they are Christians, but they've been so damaged by relationships yes. that they literally say, you know what? And, and like, we don't use these phrases in church often, but this is the truth because we use them in other places. They're like, well, you know what? They hurt me. So I'm just going, I'm going to go buck wild because I, I deserve this. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you end up making decisions where you end up having lots of regrets. Mm -hmm. So we gotta, we gotta start acknowledging what's not working. Right. We gotta start making some, some honest decisions about what's not working. If you're like what my wife said with her friend where you keep getting into these just drama, -filled, you keep attracting drama-filled kind of people, like why, right? Which is, is, is really the second point that we skipped over and that's okay. So just write number two down is taste. What do you have a taste for and why? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that she asked, that one of the things that she, her and her friend talked about, uh, and I overheard this because they were in the car one day, is like, why, why is boring not good enough for you? What, what you define as boring, right? So, so like the guy that's going, getting a, he got a job, he ain't in no drama, he don't smoke, he don't drink, he ain't doing drugs, he ain't out here, you know, giving a, living a gangster lean lifestyle, all of that. He know you, like, she know you. Why, why, is, why is that not good enough for you, Right? And, and here's the truth, y'all. Like, if we're going to be honest in this conversation, we got to be honest because we, we, we are attracted to, to the wrong images. We are attracted to the wrong images. When, when my wife and my daughter, my oldest daughter, who's in college now, were having a conversation one day, and um, my, my daughter at this point was, was, was uh, attracted to this one kind of, this one guy in particular, mm. and... Um, As y'all can see, y'all see how we get down in the Harris house, so, right? <laughs> but my, my, my wife said to my daughter something that I thought was really powerful. I didn't even have to say a word. But she was like, he's cute now, but he's not going to help you keep the lights on later. <laughs> right? So we got we to gotta change. We got to change. Even what we're attracted to, and we got to start doing some digging. Somebody say digging. Digging. We got to start doing some digging. So here's number one: What type of yes. person are you? Number two: What taste do you have? What's, what What do you have a taste for, and why? Number three: My wife dealt with this truth, right? Acknowledging what what's not working. Here's the fourth one. My God. Number four: Temptation and triggers. So we read this text, and we like. Samson was dumb. <laughs> Did anybody else get that sense? Like you're reading this and you're like, come on, bro. She didn't ask you three times. Done set you up three times. And then you finally. No, he thought it was sex toy. So he ain't realized it was being set up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sin wants you to become desensitized to reality. 
Sin wants you to become desensitized to reality. Oh, but they look so good. They smell so good. They talk so good. They dress so nice. Oh, but they treat me this kind of way. And, and last time I was in this kind of, like, so we start dumbing down and compromising. We start dumbing down and compromising. And, and, and every decision, like she, the Bible literally says, y'all, she wore him down. The text literally says she wore him down. I want to say something here. because okay. we, we. I was about so, to make a major point. I know you because I hear you preaching. You ain't supposed to be preaching. We're talking. Okay. So I'm going to preach today, though. <laughs> Go ahead. One of the things that I thought about with Samson here, he was raised as a Nazarite and told as a child, you belong to God. He was reared in this way. Hmm. Could it be that Samson had a spiritual arrogance about himself hmm. to feel that he was infallible yeah. in any situation? That's Could good. it be? That, that was my thought. Because I thought about it, I said, why? Would you lay with the devil? Because she was, she was a Philistine, right? Why would you lay with the devil and knowing what you have and then tell them your secret? Mm. So how does that relate to us as believers who are lukewarm and carnal? And when I say carnal, that means it's like, well, I, I'm kind of over here, but I'm, I'm really over here. Um, um, we can become spiritually arrogant to know why. Because God's going to give me grace. God's going to grant me I can, I can ask for forgiveness again. God's going to give me a second chance, right? Because we can position ourselves to say there's always tomorrow. I can fix it tomorrow. Yeah. Could that have been Samson's stance, even why he would reveal himself to that degree to the enemy? Yeah. Do we position ourselves that way in sexual relationships? Oh, I'll just do this this time. Yeah. Let me make this point really uh -huh. fast. Go ahead. Go ahead. Y'all want to make, you may want to write this one down. Guilt is not enough to keep you holy. Guilt is not enough to keep you holy. When you start feeling bad, you say, okay, then I'll stop or I'll change temporarily. No, you got to make some decisions before you get into that situation. Right? You got you to gotta, you gotta recognize temptation where, where it comes down, coming mm -hmm. down the street towards you and say, you know what? This is not going to end well. You need to recognize those triggers when they're happening. Our time is getting away from us, so we're going to put some skates on really fast. <laughs> so number one, what type of person are you? Number two, we got nine what these. kind of taste do you have? Like number three, word. what's the truth of your situation? Uh -huh. Number four, we just talked about temptation and triggers. So, temptation makes you dumb. Triggers that you don't pay attention to makes you dumb. Here's number five. Uh -huh. Here's number five. Team. Team. Who's actually on your team? So watch this. Are you dating people that are actually sent on assignment to take you out? Let's go another level. Are you married to somebody where y'all don't even have the same values? Right? Somebody say reset. Reset. We got to press reset on this because you got to face the truth. It becomes crystal clear after the first time that Delilah was on an assignment, right? But, but Samson is in love with her, y'all. And, and we got to recognize that, that love should not blind you to the truth. In fact, love should open your eyes to the truth, right? So, so who's on your team? Who's on your team? Anything else you want to say about that one before we move on? All right, let's go to number six. Let's go to number six. We need a reset in our tendencies. We need a reset in our tendencies. What are your tendencies? So I was, I was having a conversation with, with a gentleman, um, and, and he's, he's struggling with pornography. He's struggling with pornography. And he said to me, Pastor Christopher, he said, I just, I just don't know why I keep ending up at this place. I asked him, I said, tell me what's happening in your mind and in your life every single time you find the need to go in that direction. Right. And once we started peeling back the layers of his schedule, his routine, his habits, we recognize that there are some actual tendencies that you have that you got to press reset on those. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that no, doesn't happen often is, y'all, we get on automatic pilot and we see the problem and we deal with the symptoms, right. but we never deal with the root of the problem. What's actually putting me in the environment that's causing these problems to actually keep coming up? So somebody say tendencies. Tendencies. 
We got to deal with the tendencies. All right. Anything you want to say about that? No. Nope, let me take the next one. All right. We have to deal with the terminology that we use you around sex. No, that's the next one. Number number seven. Oh well, go to eight and then you go to seven. Uh, we have to deal with <laughs> terminology and how we even refer to sex. It's never called sex. When I was a teenager, they said hit. Then you know I want to hit. That's you know that was the language. I'm gonna hit that. From, it went from hit to beat, right? I'm gonna beat that, right? To smash. Now it's murder. Right? You know the sex is getting progressively more aggressive and even hold, hold how on, hold on. I saw some, some of them using these terms. Wait, but I saw some ladies were like, ooh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like like last week, I'm sorry, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, Pastor Tommy and Pastor Lucy's message was actually called body count. It was. Because right? that's what people are talking about. Man, what's your body count? A body count? count is a what's murder. What's your body count? Right? Like a body count means somebody was dead. <laughs> you just kill somebody right. in sex? Right. But if you're referring to it or seeing it in that derogatory or aggressive light, you need a hard reset to see it the way that God designed it. Yeah. And if somebody, if he were to come, girl, let me murder you, no, nah, friend, I ain't interested. Right? <laughs> So you want to make sure that even the language that you are using has been reset to align itself with what the Word of God says about it. Okay? Go back to number eight since I skipped it. Number, number seven. Number seven, but you know, sorry. you know, while you were talking, I just noticed too. Uh-uh, you're going to say something crazy. No, no, no. <laughs> that, those terms that, we, that you just talked about, yes. they work when you're single. They don't work when you're married. I don't know if they work when you're single. Singles? No, I'm saying singles use those terms when they're single, Right? But when you marry, I can't walk into my talking about let me beat you tonight. Like, what? <laughs> like, like that don't work. <laughs> let me hit that. What? <laughs> <laughs> that just don't work. Oh, well. How many of y'all married people know I'm telling the truth? Come on. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> y'all gonna be like, what happened to Pastor Chris? We got a black eye. <laughs> All right. Okay, do All number right. Seven. Number number, number, seven. 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 number seven. Number seven. Transparency. Mm -hmm. Transparency. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Have you been revealing too much to the wrong people? Have you been telling the wrong people the wrong stuff? Mm -hmm. Can I tell you something? Please hear this, y'all. Everybody don't need your social security number. When you start dating somebody, you shouldn't be revealing too much too soon. The, the dating, dating is a process on purpose. So I can't tell them in the very beginning that I want to be married and I want to have three kids? No, because the they ain't day. coming back. Okay. okay. If it's a guy, he ain't coming back. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. too much. Unless he's just interested in hitting that and keeping... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So number one is type. Number two is taste. What's your taste buds? Number three, truth. Number four, temptation and triggers. Number five, team. Who's actually on your team? Number six, tendencies. Number seven is transparency. Number eight is terminology. Now, here's the last one. This one's not actually, we added this one. This is actually not in the scriptures, but we felt like this one, need, we need to reset on this one too. And this is the last one. Trends. <coughs> Trends. And here's all we're going to say about this and we're going to land the plane. Here's all we're going to say about it. Christians should not follow trends. We should set them. Okay? Christians should not follow trends. We should set them. It is our assignment, y'all, to be the standard for the world. And we laughed a little bit and we had a good time and that's great. But please hear me, y'all. This, this is a critical message that's needed in the body of Christ today. It is a critical conversation that's needed in the church today. There, there are married people who need a reset because you're married, but this, this area of your life is not fulfilling because you brought in your history. That person's brought in their history, and it's a collision of two histories that's creating pain. We got singles in the church that are frustrated in this area as well and feels like the Bible doesn't speak answers to this issue, and yet the Bible does give us answers to this. 
There are some of you that are hear, hearing me right now, listening to my wife and I talk about this, and we're laughing, but here's the truth. You're laughing to hide some of the pain. You're laughing to hide some of the condemnation, the shame, and the guilt that you carried in this for years or days or months. It's not lost on me that there's somebody in here right now worshiping with us online. This past week, you made a decision, or you may have made a decision, that was not healthy for your sexual history, your sexual life, your sexual identity, whatever it may be. And yes, we're laughing, we're having a good time, we're speaking truth. But here's what I don't want you to miss. God gives us the power to press reset. God gives us the power to press reset. Now, is there some work involved? Absolutely. Are there some things that we got to do differently? Absolutely. Quite candidly, are there times we need to go back and apologize to some people? Absolutely. But the message we want you to walk away with today is that we need to reset. I'll share this really fast as we close out today. And the, the married couples that hang out with us um, when we have all of our marriage events, some of them have heard this before. But when I proposed to my wife, uh, I proposed to her on December 16th of that year that we got engaged. It was the week before Christmas, and that week we were going to go down to her family's house in South Florida and, and hang out and all of that. But on December 17th, I went over to her apartment, and I had proposed the night before, and it was great. We had a great time. Um, but on December 17th, I put her, we, we sat at her table in her apartment. And at that time, I, I'd had three serious girlfriends prior to my wife. And I called all three of them individually on speakerphone with my wife present. And individually, I said to them, hey, yesterday I got engaged. I never had a bad breakup. I've been very fortunate that way. I've never had a bad breakup, uh, no drama. It's just a different season. Life moves on. But I said to each one of them, I'm in a new season now. Is there anything you need to say to me now? Because when I hang up this phone, our relationship changes. Amen. Our relationship changes. Amen. One of the things that I wanted to send a clear message to them was, ain't no going to be no foolishness here. But more than anything, I wanted to send a message to her, I don't have anything to hide. I don't have anything that you're going to have to worry about any skeletons in my closet. I don't have anything that you're going to have to worry about this coming up on later on or, you know, any kids out there, you know, whatever. I, just, I want her to know, hey, I'm coming to you with a clean slate. And here's what I'm trying to say to some of you today. Now, was that hard and uncomfortable for me to do? Oh, yeah. And oh, no, I didn't do the same. In case you want. <laughs> <laughs> It's been over 20 years. Get on. <laughs> I know all of their names. I know oh where they God. live. <laughs> um, I knew their social security numbers. Anyway. I had surveillance running on them. No. I knew what was up. No, I'm just joking. Um, I'm not telling you, we're not telling you that a sexual reset is, is easy. We are saying to you it's necessary. If you're courageous enough in this moment, we got to close service out, but if you're courageous enough in this moment today to say we need a reset, I need a reset, I want you to just stand. We want to pray for you really quickly. Here's what we're going to do. Um, Sierra, who's our prayer leader, is actually coming to close announcements. We'll do closing announcements and close the service. Sierra, I'm going to have you come out. Are you back there? I'm going to have you come out and pray for everybody that's standing. And um, my wife and I are available outside in the lobby. Pastor Lucy will be outside in the lobby as well. Our prayer team will be available in the prayer room if you need prayer. Here's what I want to say finally, y'all. If you're standing now, Sometimes the best thing you can do is to be honest about where you are mm -hmm. and simply ask for help. Simply ask for help. Don't try to do this by yourself. Sometimes you just need to be honest and say, man, yo, bro, this is where I'm at, man. I need help. And we're committed as a church family to help you walk through this together.
All right? Come on, Sierra. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I thank God because this is a church that is transparent. Amen? This is a church that believes that um, we deal with things at the root. Right? Amen? And so it's no mistake that the Lord um, placed it on Pastor Christopher's heart to call me out to pray for a reset in our minds, okay? Because just because people are in leadership positions or stand on the altar and have the privilege to be on this platform doesn't mean that they at times can struggle with different times in their lives or seasons where a reset is needed. So today I join with you. I pray for you as you pray for me. Amen? And we do this together. Amen? So Father God, I thank you. And I stand before you with my brothers and sisters that have stood up and, and, and acted upon a bold motion and movement towards your, your cross, towards your, your altar. And so I just thank you, Father God, that you're going to reset our minds. That even for those that didn't stand up today, but that are sitting knowing that they need a reset in theirs, Lord, we pray over them as well, Father. I thank you that you are purifying and clearing our minds of those past traumas, even those things that have been embedded in us and taught to us, Father. Reset, Lord Jesus, and change our perspective. Renew our minds so that it can be transformed, Lord. Thank you that we don't walk out of this building the same. Thank you that even in this series and segment, Father God, that you have called your leaders of this church to do, Father God, it has been for a transforming of the way that we are, are carrying out our lives because this is a lifestyle. And we can't do it the way we've been doing it anymore because you have a purpose and a plan for each person standing. For each person, even in the sound booth, backstage, those that are not standing and can't stand in the moment here presently, Father God, you have a purpose and plan for each of us that need the reset. So thank you, have your way, Holy Spirit. We know, Father God, that you are transforming and renewing, restoring. You are peeling off those layers that need to be peeled off right now. I speak to the enemy's camp right now and say, shut your mouth. The mouth of the lion, the mouth of the deceiver is shut right now. Now we thank you that we fix our eyes upon the Lord and we trust in his word that will wash us white as snow and I just pray for protection over my brother and sister I thank you father that you are dispatching your angels I thank you father that you are rising up pillars in their lives I thank you that you are rising those that will hold them accountable we thank you for accountability God and we glorify your name, Lord Jesus, for this is all because of the purpose and the plans that you have for us, because many are the plans of a person's heart, but the Lord's purpose will prevail in each person standing up right now in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray, amen and amen.